Hey guys, welcome back to another episode. Uh, on this episode, we are taking a look at probably the biggest score I've ever had of arcade uh, monitors, candy cab size, 29 inch monitors. Uh, so let's go ahead and take, it some, uh, take a look at some of the pictures of what happened. And I'll kind of explain the story as it goes and kind of show you where we are with our first monitor out of the hall. Let's go. All right, all of this uh, started about a month ago when my wife was browsing uh, Facebook Marketplace and came across an ad for a bowling alley, a local uh, smaller bowling alley that was uh, upgrading and basically renovating everything. So part of that included getting rid of all of their old CRT uh, score monitors as well as the uh, on-the-floor touch monitors. Uh, so she kind of saw in the background that they had these monitors kind of on the floor. They weren't really listed in the ad. Um, but upon uh, sending them a message, they actually let us know that this was, in fact, for a series of 24 uh, 27-inch um, CRT monitors, which 27-inch in America is 29-inch in Japan, which is the exact size uh, for most candy cabs out there, such as Blast Cities, Astro Cities, things like that. So after uh, working out a deal to uh, pick up all of these monitors, uh, the wife and I muscled uh, all 24 into my truck, into her Ford Fiesta. So we got everything moved. Uh, we could take seven at a time. We have six in the bed here. One could fit in the passenger seat of my truck, and one could fit in the, uh, the hatch of her uh, Fiesta. So it took about two and a half, three hours to fully disassemble everything, get them in the, the truck and the car drive them across town to get them into my storage unit but worked out a wonderful deal for everybody they were gonna they were gonna destroy these things in a day or two so I was able to, to luckily save all of these and hopefully get them up and running and into uh, uh, arcades uh, around uh, Florida all right so here we see all the monitors uh, tucked as neatly as they could get them into my storage unit and you can see uh, how filthy these things were so in addition to weighing probably about 125 to 150 pounds a piece, these things have been hanging up, uh, you know, in this bowling alley for years and years and years. Uh, so they're just covered in dust and, and sealing, uh, like the drywall stuff and probably asbestos and who knows what else. But this is them, all 24 fully uh, down, safe in my storage unit, stacked up uh, as best as I could. Uh, but you can see just how much room these things take up having 24 of these beasts. And here's me wishing I was dead after moving uh, all of these monitors with, the, again, the help of my lovely wife, Mrs. Pass Blaster. Uh, super exhausting, but also super happy to have saved these things and hopefully get them uh, up and running elsewhere. All right, so here is a better look at these monitors. So these are labeled as Brunswick uh, Frameworks 27-inch color overhead monitors again these were used uh, mostly for scores so when you'd bowl and you'd get a strike you'd get whatever you'd look up over the over your head and that this is uh, what those monitors were used for in reality these are Saronix 2793 uh, monitors or at least the chassis is uh, but they're 15k monitors they utilize an RGB signal with ground and two different sinks just like most arcade monitors do all right, so these are the bowling alley monitors that I picked up, uh, one of 24. Um, so what we're gonna be doing is first off, pulling this plastic case off so I can make it easier to carry into my house. Um, but the input you can see kind of here is on the top. Uh, but we're gonna be uh, pulling that off and just making like a custom connector to plug into our JAMA harness. But yeah, these are, these are them. They're massively huge, uh, 27 inch really 29 inch viewable monitors, uh, Brunswick branded, but they're Centronics or Setronics or something like that. But we'll go ahead and look at that once we get this case off and get this beast into the uh, workshop. All right, so we have the case off. You can kind of see it uh, sitting over there in my grass, but uh, here is the tube decased, at least partially decased the plastic off of it. So we do have a little bit of burn on here and some scratches in the glass, but this is kind of our test monitor to see what these are actually capable of displaying, what they're gonna look like. So we're gonna clean all this kind of grossness off and you'll probably be surprised how much better this looks. So there's not a lot of burn in the tube. It's kind of hard to see, but you can see a little bit, some X's and lines and things like that. Kind of a faint X here in the middle. Um, but the back's really what we wanna look at over here. You can see we've got our chassis down here. Uh, Ceronics is what it is, uh, basic little, small chassis over here we have an iso transformer isolation transformer and then over here is our brunswick board which we're actually going to completely bypass this so we're going to pull these out 
uh, and then we're going to just focus on pulling power from here directly to the chassis and then we've got to hack into this harness right here kind of see it we're going to hack into this harness here and feed our video from our JAMA harness and our test rig to make sure it works and then we also have our little remote board here but overall this is what we're working with so now I'm going to get this thing in the house start cleaning it up and then start hacking up the wires make a test rig and make sure that they all work so let's get this beast moved all right so here we are we got the monitor decased out in the garage workshop kind of working on some stuff so uh this is not a permanent solution i just wanted to kind of make something uh quick and dirty to, to get up and testing but basically uh there's a little brunswick board over here that we got to remove uh so i just bypassed that we have an isolation transformer down here uh, i had to go around the relay um, that originally came in the monitor because we're not going to be using it. So basically, the power that comes in from the ISO, I'm sorry, that comes out of the ISO, goes directly to the chassis now. We took the uh, video cable here and kind of spliced some adapters on here real quick again. This is not a, not a permanent solution, just something quick and dirty so I could kind of test stuff. Here's our video adjustment board, and once we had all that hooked up and kind of cleaned, uh, if we come around to the front, I've got my little signal generator on, and look at this we have an image and yes it does need a little bit of help the colors are absolutely awesome though uh, we need to do a little bit of a d gauze down here but we'll go ahead and make sure we knock that out but overall this is great um, so next thing we'll do is we'll go ahead and get a different video source on here because it looks like we've got about you can kind of see it here it's about an inch of color where it's not shifting over all the way to the right but we'll go ahead and get that fixed up but this is awesome we got a bowling alley monitor kind of powered up with a little signal generator and the colors look absolutely fantastic so the cool thing is there was a service sticker on the on the inside of here that looks like it was service not too long ago um looks like we had a build date of 1998 um but there was like a service thing i think is it this one? Oh, here we go a uh, service in september of 2016 it says uh Probably good. Now, I don't know if that's in reference to the actual uh, the scoring system over there, but on here we have a little uh, repair sticker. It looks like 3.30.16. Uh, this was last service. So not too long ago. So looks like we did pretty good. Uh, the next time we see this, though, we're probably going to try to, again, feed it another video source. But we are for sure going to be pulling it out of this monstrous case. Uh, and the first one that we do, which is probably this one, is going to go into uh, Rob's Blast City since his uh, chassis and monitor died. So we'll go ahead and get cranking on this. And the next time you see it, it'll probably uh, be in a Blast City. But thanks for watching part one of this little weird mini series that we're doing. And we'll be uh, on to part two next. See you next time.